Mr. Mercoldo presents a new virtual field trip, including lions, tigers, polar bears, and more. Mr. Dave Mercoldo presents a virtual field trip to the San Diego Zoo in San Diego, California. Here I am at the entrance of the San Diego Zoo in front of the big lion sculpture getting ready to go in. So upon entering, the first thing I did was I went to the gift shop and picked up some new swag. And I got this cool tiger shirt. And before we continue, we got to address this debatable question. Are zoos ethical? Meaning, are they moral? Are they right? Or are they wrong? Let's look at both sides of the issue. Some people think zoos are great because they can educate the public and foster an appreciation for other species. They can help save endangered species by bringing them into a safe environment. But oftentimes animals in captivity suffer from boredom, stress, and confinement. Removing individual animals from their natural habitat endangers the wild population. And the vast majority of captive breeding programs do not release animals back into the wild. So the San Diego Zoo has a pretty good reputation. And let's take a deeper look into why. The San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance says it's an international nonprofit conservation that integrates wildlife, health and care, science and education to develop sustainable conservation solutions. So let's take a deeper look at the conservation work that they're doing. One of the animals that they are working on conserving is the white rhino. There are only 18,000 white rhinos left in the world. In August 2022, the San Diego Zoo made news headlines with the birth of a new white rhino. But won't this new rhino spend its whole life in captivity? Does breeding this rhino really help? What do you think about zoos being the ones who breed animals that are endangered? According to the San Diego Zoo's website, they have been donating funds and resources to the Reteti Elephant Sanctuary in Kenya, Africa. The Reteti Elephant Sanctuary is truly doing remarkable work with the baby elephants in Kenya. However, in 2019, the Organization in Defense of Animals listed the San Diego Zoo as the number nine worst zoo for elephants because of breaking up friendships and breeding more elephants than they have space for. The San Diego Zoo was not featured on the 2020 list though, but I did see the cages when I was there in 2022 where the elephants were kept in and the elephants in these cages did not look very comfortable. So we're going to get to the video, but in conclusion, while it is noble for the San Diego Zoo to aid the Reteti Wildlife Sanctuary, it seems to be in the best interest of elephants who need assistance to live in sanctuaries and not zoos. What do you think? Would you still pay to go to the zoo and be okay not seeing elephants if you knew they were happier elsewhere? That is where our power lies as consumers. Are we going to support zoos or not? So I went into this trip thinking the San Diego Zoo is a must-see place, it has a great reputation. And so we're going to focus on the positive aspects of the zoo, how we're going to educate you, the public, about all the different types of wildlife and species. And I did see a lot of different cool animals and I'm going to share them with you now. So let's now zoom in this map of the San Diego Zoo to our first stop, the Lost Forest. Some exciting animals in this section are the gorillas and the tigers. So as I enter the Lost Forest, I see this infographic that says, what's the deal with palm oil? So apparently the orangutans who live in the forests of Indonesia are having their habitats and their trees where they live cut down because people want to make palm oil. But please, everyone watching this video, know your power as a consumer and boycott palm oil from Indonesia. Do not buy any products made with palm oil from Indonesia, including makeup products made from palm oil. If we don't do this, the beloved species known as the orangutan will go extinct. And we don't want to see that happen, which leads us to the gorillas. Where have all the wild gorillas gone? One place that still has wild gorillas is in Cameroon. So the San Diego Zoo sent a field team all the way to Cameroon to investigate the habitat needs of gorillas and to educate local people about the bushmeat trade that devastates the populations of the great apes to see if they can help with the problem. So the only place in the world you can find wild gorillas would be in the dense forests of equatorial Africa, you know, countries near the equator in Africa. And these species are endangered due to human activities taking up their habitats. 
One good thing about the San Diego Zoo is, based on people paying to go there, they can take that money and send researchers to go to different parts of the world and try to protect the animals. So the gorillas are a popular attraction. I think we're very fascinated by them because they're a lot like us. Here are some of the gorillas that I saw. It was Paul Don, the gentle giant, Jessica the queen, and Denny the little prince. They also had Maka the ace, Zuba the ruler of the roost, and Mandazi the laid back guy. So it was about 10 a.m. and Mandazi was staring right at the glass, looking directly at the few people there. I never seen a gorilla position himself to be concerned about the people so much, but what he was actually doing was watching an iPad that a woman was holding up. I spoke to this woman. She said she had been going to visit the gorilla for 20 years on a regular basis, and she found out that the gorillas love watching themselves on TV. Okay, nearby the gorillas are all these birds, including the toucan. Some fun facts about the toucan. The toucan's large bill helps it reach for faraway fruit. The toucan can spend more time hopping than flying. Toucans also often hang out in large groups. So let's look, have a look around at some of the other animals. You can see this little monkey up there. And then I go to see some other monkeys, including the lion-tailed Maque. He was pretty relaxed. There was about two or three of them in this enclosure. You can see one right there on the right. And he's got this big mane of hair. So although the cheetah is the fastest animal, the leopards are fast too. The leopards can run 58 miles per hour. Look at that leopard who walked right in front of me. That was a close encounter with the leopard. So the San Diego Zoo still advertises for giant pandas that are no longer there. The two iconic giant pandas that used to be at the San Diego Zoo have been since taken away. Something regarding the 2019 tariffs that were going on between China and the United States during Donald Trump's presidency led to the two pandas being taken out of the zoo. But the zoo did have the other panda, the red panda. And the red panda was a pleasure to see. It was very active when I got to visit the red panda. The red panda comes from parts of China and eats a similar thing as the normal panda, although they're not related. So there's one red panda sleeping, but look how cute this little furry red panda is walking around with his bushy raccoon resembling tail. So this red panda was walking around. He was just on the move. They gave him some nice things for him to climb on. So the red panda seemed to be enjoying himself. I got to watch this red panda just climb all over the place. So he's one of the cutest animals in the zoo. There were also some different monkeys. These Angolan Columbus monkeys, they were very active, jumping around very fast. Then they had some mandrills who you're not supposed to make any eye contact with. They're very serious. Next was the tigers, but when I got to the tigers, they were just sleeping, so it wasn't much to say about them. Then we have the river whale, also known as the hippopotamus, which is closely related to a whale. The third largest mammal on earth. It's a strong swimmer, it's active at night, it can hold its breath for five minutes, it produces its own sunblock, it's bulletproof, and uh, yeah, you don't want to mess with the hippo. They're very dangerous. So inside the zoo, there's bus tours that get around, but you can also take these very tall gondolas, which can get a little bit frightening if you're afraid of heights, like I am a little bit afraid of heights. And then next up, we're at the elephant odyssey. First animal we see at the elephant odyssey is the king of the jungle, the lion. You see the male lion and the female lion taking a nap. Lions are the only cats that live in groups, including up to 30 lions in a pride. And there's me with a giant fake sloth. Okay, the next animal I see is the Asiatic elephant. Letting out into the greater enclosure, he was eating a lot. So some fun facts are they can weigh over 5,000 kilograms. The Asiatic elephant has one more toenail than the African elephant. It can drink up to 200 liters of water per day. It's an important cultural and religious icon in Asia, in India and other parts of the world. And its temporal lobe in its brain is much larger than a human, so it has a much better sense of memory than a human. 
Elephants may remember everything that happens to them. Their brain power for memory is so strong. So he probably remembers how good that food tastes as he keeps putting sticks into his mouth and eating them. Now we have the African bush elephant. It's the largest land mammal in the world. 24 feet long, 13 feet high, and weighs 11 tons. It was so endearing to see these two elephants kind of cuddling up on each other. Relationships mean a lot to these elephants. The next animal I saw was the South African cheetah, the fastest land mammal. When chasing, it can run up to 70 miles per hour. The cheetah's social life is really a mixed bag. Some cheetahs decide to mate and stay in the same cage, and some cheetahs prefer to be alone. The next was the polar rim, where they had some interesting stuff about polar bears. They had a giant book, you know, I love giant books about polar bears, a big statue. And then the only polar bear I saw was in the distance and it was looking brown. So I didn't really spend too much time with the polar bears, but they're endangered, I know, because of climate change. Next we have the urban jungle and outback. Oh, this guy right here, the Chacon Pekeri, he reminded me of Pumba, although he's not a warthog, he's got to be a similar species. The next animal I saw were the majestic giraffes. Giraffes are the tallest mammals in the world. Giraffes may eat up to 75 pounds of leaves per day, and baby giraffes can stand just 30 minutes after being born. The next thing I saw were the baboons. They were certainly entertaining. Next, I saw various hooved grazing species of antelope. And what this one's called, a bantabok. There were several different types of species of antelope. You know, they have hooves, they eat grass. Oh, I saw a few camels. Camels store water in their humps. And then I saw the condor, also known as the vulture. The condor is the largest flying bird in North America, but it's not a bird of prey. It only eats dead animals. It's a scavenger, and its head changes color as it gets older, from black to pink. Next is the koala, which is not a bear. It's a marsupial. They sleep 18 hours per day. They're born blind and hairless and without ears. And the word koala is an aboriginal word. Next, I saw all six species of flamingos, including these American flamingos, but they had all of the different species of flamingos. What's interesting about flamingos is they change color based on what they eat. So they eat a lot of shrimp and that makes them turn pink. All right, the next we have the Discovery Outpost, the last stop to see some of the smaller animals, including insects. And then you've got some turtles swimming here. So we got the turtles. It was cool to see them above and below the water. We saw a big snake. And the Lake Tekoa Frog, the X total, was an interesting looking salamander. There's a white salamander. Try to, try to find him at the bottom of the tank there. He's endangered. Then we saw some little alligators. And the walking leaf bug. How about that for Mimi Cry for blending in with your environment and using the camouflage? He Mimi Cry's a leaf. He looks just like a leaf. And the last endangered animal today is the Cayman Lizard. Thank you for watching my virtual field trip to the San Diego Zoo. Be sure to like and subscribe to Dave Mercaldo on YouTube. Check me out on Instagram, Learning with Mr. Mercaldo. And stay tuned to the next episode where I go to the Stranger Things immersive experience in Brooklyn, New York.